drawing attention to a national issue that frankly would not be understood by very many people absent a conference like this. When people would say electromagnetic pulse, I, I suspect people's eyes glaze over. But if we don't educate them, where do we go on this? And frankly speaking, we are not prepared as a nation to face the threat of EMP at any level of government. EMP has potentially grave consequences to both the public sector and the private sector, and it should be a priority in Washington. EMP is an issue that now has our attention, and we will take steps at the county level to make it a part of our disaster preparedness initiatives. And as we continue to educate about EMP today, I have the tremendous honor of welcoming our keynote speaker, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. We're grateful to have someone like Mike Huckabee's stature to talk about the important issue of EMP and the need for our nation to prepare for that threat. Please join me in welcoming Governor Mike Huckabee. Imagine if everyone in America, or if a substantial population of this country lost power. And I think we need to recognize that while there have been many who have been absolutely derisive in their contempt of this very event, let them sneer and be as snarky as they wish to be. But I would remind you that we have experienced enough things in this country already by the way of uh, tragedies that we didn't take seriously that we should not minimize the risk that we face with electric magnetic pulse. When I was governor in 2005, we saw the impact of Hurricane Katrina on the Gulf Coast. 75,000 Louisiana evacuees fled to our state. Many of them had been stranded on the tops of their homes and wading chest deep in water for days. As we listened to the horror stories, as we watched it, as our National Guard troops from my state went next door to Louisiana, and many of our state employees went there to help, we became aware nationally of what a tragedy we see when the infrastructure of any community completely collapses. Water, sewer, transportation, communications. When everything begins to fall apart, there's utter chaos. And that will be a blight upon the United States of America for as long as any of us have memory. The reason that an EMP and the potential of it is so very, very, very serious is because unlike the natural disasters of an ice storm or a power outage within a defined location, we're not simply talking about the loss of electricity, but the loss of all of the other various electronic and digital devices that we so now depend on. And the idea that this is uh, some science fiction that has no basis in reality denies and defies what a bipartisan EMP commission agreed that it did represent, and that is a serious threat to the safety and security of every single American. The plot is genuine. What would be the plan if someone were really wanting to topple free people everywhere? What would be the best way to go about it? Well, frankly, if you're faced with an enemy who is stronger than you, the first thing you do is cripple his strength. Then you prepare for the kill. If you don't think you can take out the enemy at his present point of strength, then you cripple his strength and make him as weak as you are. What is the strength of the United States? Some would say, well, it's military strength or it's economic strength. Those are incredible strengths. But even our military strength and our economic strength are based on innovation and technology. We are the strongest military nation because we have the most amazing military technology. So if I were going to bring the United States to its knees, I think the smart thing to do is to say, look at their strengths. It's in their amazing innovation and technology and in their communications, and all of these things that would be affected by an EMP. And if, in fact, we could be crippled, then we could be killed. That's why we need very seriously to have a prescription, a way to deal with it, 
if you will, a Manhattan Project in reverse. Not so much to launch something of a nuclear device, but something to protect and prevent the impact of a launch of a nuclear device that's used against us. The nuclear device that we once feared most was the mushroom cloud that would take out an entire city. The nuclear threat we need to be most concerned about today is not so much that from the halls of Moscow or Beijing, uh, a, a large scale rocket would be launched or a missile, but rather that from a freighter just off the coast, something would be launched into the air, taking out significant parts of the power grid with the cascading effect that you've been hearing about for the past two days.